Pros don't practice their aim just because they're motivated. They do it because it's become a habit. Motivation alone is not enough to achieve your long-term goals. It takes something more stable and persistent. It is, however, a great tool if used in the correct way. It is possible for young men to achieve difficult physical feats if they're motivated in the right direction. Motivation can help you navigate the rough waters on your journey, no matter the destination. But, as most people know, it ebbs and flows unpredictably, and is sometimes hard to rely upon. When your motivation inevitably dips, you need a reliable backup to pull you through. This is where habits come in. Habits don't require short bursts of motivation, they're automatic. A large portion of our day-to-day -day actions are entirely habitual. You brush your teeth every day without even thinking about it. And regardless of what you're trying to improve, without habits, you won't be able to keep up consistent practice. So the important question is, how can you create a habit? Habits are not a finish line to be crossed, they're a lifestyle to be lived. In each of us, there are deep reservoirs of ability that we habitually fail to use. This is what we know about habits. Old habits die hard. Take a look at this graph. Every activity has a minimum level of motivation required for you to initiate and maintain. So, as long as your motivation is below this threshold, you will not initiate the task. In other words, to do literally anything, we need our motivation to surpass the threshold for the activity. The obvious answer, therefore, is to look for ways to raise our motivation. But the ultimate long-term goal is to permanently lower the threshold itself, so less motivation is needed to initiate the activity in the first place. Habits are what lower this threshold. Like brushing your teeth, habits put your brain on autopilot and will initiate the routine automatically without conscious effort. Habit creation can be broadly split into three main phases. The first step is to create the initial spark of motivation. The second is to maintain the spark to allow you to keep consistently doing a routine over an extended period of time. And the last step is to finally transform this routine into a habit. You can use these steps to create any habit you want, but for the purpose of this video, we'll be focusing on aim training. The first step is easy. There are countless ways to get short bursts of motivation. If you're one of the people who clicked on this video because you're currently in a motivation slump, reflect back on your journey. Look at how much you have improved to remind you to keep climbing. No matter how steep the climb ahead may look, remember the distance you have covered thus far. Don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Keep putting in the hours and you will reach the top. The same is true for the opposite. If you feel as though you're currently worse than a previous point in your gaming career, remind yourself of how good you can be and have been. You have the potential to return to your former level and go beyond. Are you aiming for a specific rank? Maybe your goal is to qualify for a specific league or join a particular team. Or you might be one of the people who want to go fully pro. These long-term goals will often give you the motivational boost that you need. There are plenty of other ways to create the spark of motivation, and you know what best works for you. The difficult part is actually maintaining the spark. Motivation is always on a downward trend, so we need to continuously counter this. Short-term goals can help us here. While reminding yourself of your long-term goals is great for sparking sudden motivation, short-term goals get you through longer periods of time. Ticking off short-term goals will give you small boosts to motivation and something to look forward to every day. Aim to set at least one of these goals a day and make sure they're measurable, realistic, and at least somewhat challenging. Remember that the only way to notice improvement is by actually measuring it. Improvement is a gradual process and it's hard to notice immediately. For instance, while aim training, time yourself, count your kills, and use the built-in score system. Seeing real progress over time can be a huge motivator. Though it may sound like a cliche, shift your mindset to focus on improvement and you'll start to see losses as something you can learn from. With this mindset, it'll be easier to analyze mistakes and get motivated to fix them. The main point that we're trying to get at is that small but regular actions go a long way in maintaining your motivation. All in all, competition, measured progress, and ticking off short-term goals are small but great ways to consistently boost your motivation. But think about it this way, instead of just resorting to boosting motivation back up when it dips, we can also minimize or entirely prevent the dip in the first place. We can make negative experiences have less impact on our motivation. Our brains are hardwired to respond more strongly to negative outcomes than positive or neutral ones, so it's in our best interest to distract our brain and focus on something more productive. Simply being aware that your brain has a negativity bias means that you're able to make conscious efforts to counter this. Even worse, some people make the mistake of focusing on negative things which are out of their control. Too many players focus on their teammates' mistakes, on broken metas or overpowered mechanics. Don't say, this is so broken or this meta sucks. Instead say, even though they had an unfair advantage, there were still mistakes that I made that cost us the round. If you can do decent against the meta that is unfavorable to you, you'll do amazing once the meta inevitably rebalances. Say, however, that even after your best efforts, you find yourself in a motivation dip during your practice. What can you do to overcome it? It may seem obvious, but we need to make the task more enjoyable. In other words, we need to temporarily lower the motivational threshold to allow us to continue with our practice. Listening to your favorite playlist, tuning into a podcast, or even hopping into a call with a friend are great ways to make the routine more enjoyable. And give yourself a small reward to look forward to once you're done. 
All these things make the activity less boring and makes it easier to continue. Now, we won't dwell on it for too long, but entering the flow state is another incredibly valuable tool to endure long periods of practice. In this state of mind, you feel fully immersed and hyper-focused on your routine, and time flies by much faster. We'll be going into detail about flow in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. Okay, we've learned the fundamentals to maintain motivation, but now let's finally learn how we can transform our routines into habits. In his international bestseller, Atomic Habits, James Clear describes all human habits, good or bad, in four distinct steps. Cue, craving, routine, and reward. All four steps are crucial in forming a habit. If the cue is missing, you will not initiate the action. Reduce the craving, and you lack the motivation to act. Make the routine too difficult, and you won't be able to do it. And if the reward fails to satisfy your desire, then you will not repeat it again in the future. Understanding that this is how our brain works, we can develop strategies to kickstart new, desirable habits. First, we need to link the routine to a few cues. For example, we can have an easy to reach icon for our aim trainer on our desktop, or have our sports sleeve ready at our desk. The more visual cues you have in your environment, the more likely it is that your brain will initiate the habit. Alongside visual cues, we can also use time-based cues. This could be something like, it's almost 7 p.m. so it's time to practice my aim, or I've just finished dinner so it's time for aim training. Set yourself an alarm or use task scheduler on Windows to automatically schedule and launch your aim trainer every day. Basically, we want our cues to be as obvious as possible, and the behaviour as easy to start as possible. Disciplined people don't have more willpower than the average person. They're just very good at structuring their environment so they have lots of productive cues around them and very few unproductive cues. Second, we need to actually crave the activity. Craving is the engine that drives behaviour. But how do we increase craving for something boring like aim training or dry runs? Well, we use a strategy known as temptation bundling. Simply put, pair an activity you need to do with an activity you want to do. For instance, create a playlist of your favourite songs and only allow yourself to listen to it whilst aim training. Your brain will now associate the playlist that you want to listen to with the routine of aim practice that you need to do. Now, you'll want to practice your aim. Just make a list of things you enjoy doing and bundle them with a routine you don't. Third, we need to make sure that the routine is actually easy to do. Human behaviour follows the law of least effort. We naturally gravitate towards the option that requires the least amount of work. So, we need to make the routine easy and straightforward. Implement a 5 minute rule. When you start a new habit, it should take no longer than 5 minutes to complete. 5 minutes is not long at all, so it's very easy to get started, but at the same time, months of 5 minutes each day will add up over time. Besides, the routine will get easier eventually, so you'll naturally increase the length of your training sessions. Though it may not seem like much, starting with small amounts of practice each day will get you a training schedule you've always wanted. Finally, we need to make the end reward as satisfying as possible. You can complete a routine as many times as you want, but if you gain no satisfaction out of it, you will burn out eventually. Humans have evolved to prioritise immediate rewards over delayed rewards. So, if we want a habit to stick, we need to feel immediately successful, even if it's in a small way. One of the most satisfying feelings is the feeling of making progress. So, the more we progress, the more we become motivated by our results, and the more we work to progress even further. So, as we mentioned earlier, track your progress. Whether you're using the in-app tracking or tracking your progress externally, just make sure you can visualise your improvement. This also works in the long run. Creating good, consistent habits will have a positive impact on your general gameplay, and you'll start to notice improvements in-game. In the end, just follow this four-step road plan and you'll be on your way to creating productive habits. To summarise, make the cues as obvious as possible, make the craving as attractive as possible, make the routine as easy as possible, and make the reward as satisfying as possible. The most difficult part of a habit is actually maintaining it. This is a topic that we'll be diving deeper into in the next episode of the eSports Psychology series. In the end, if there's just one thing you can take away from this video, it's just do something. There is no perfect formula for creating a habit, so doing something is usually the best thing we can do. Just starting a behaviour is very difficult, but once we have started, the rest tends to become a lot easier. We hope this video introduced you to new concepts, and if you enjoyed, be sure to share this with your friends. Thank you for watching.